I'm just going to put the zeros right in. So, okay, so we have 0, 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 10, 11, 12, 12, and 13. So now we can put our ones in here if we want. And I'm actually going to use the zeros in this case to find the product of sum terms or the max terms. So if we look at this, we have the pair that wraps around here, pair right there, this pair, this pair, this pair, and finally we have the pair that wraps around right here. So again, just like we did with sum of products, we want to locate our distinguished terms. In this case, they're going to be distinguished zeros. So we only have one prime implicant around this zero, one prime implicant around this zero, and one prime implicant around this zero. So we're definitely going to use the prime implicants that are around those distinguished zeros. Now let's write our function. Let's start here with this one. So if we go up, we see b is 1, and c and d are 0, 1. So remember, wherever we have a 1, it's now knotted. So this is the term we get for product of sums. I'm going to go down and use this prime implicant to take care of this distinguished zero. So if we look up, we see a and b are 1, 0. So a naught plus b. If we go over, we see that c is 1 plus not c. So, so far we've taken care of these two zeros and these two zeros. Now the next distinguished zero is right here, so we won't definitely want to take care of that one next. So if we look at this pair that wraps around, we look up and we find that B is zero. And if we look over, we see that C, D is one, zero. Okay, so the only two zeros that we haven't taken care of are these two up here. And so I'm just going to use the horizontal pair right there. And we look up, we find that A is 1. So we get a not A. Look over and we see C and D are 0. So those just stay true. And this is your product of sums.